Uh, excellent. Thank you. So um, I have the uh, pleasure to introduce um, Paula Valkanen uh, from Alto University, um, who is our guest speaker today at our seminar series here in the School of Health Information Science. Uh, Paula is, comes to us with a very uh, unique background and experience from both the, the public sector as well as the private sector and academia. Uh, Paula has over 15 years of experience in user experience design, service design, and user research, and she's worked in both consulting and product development. She is currently working as a doctoral researcher at Aalto University in Finland, and she is visiting us here at UVic. Uh, in, 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 in finalizing her doctoral thesis. In her presentation today, she will be come up covering the pre preliminary results of her studies among older adults in different life situations and will present her ideas on how to take an older adult's user needs into account for e-health design. So her presentation, as, as you can see, is entitled Towards Human-Centered e-Health for Older Adults, Understanding Needs and Patient Experiences. Older adults themselves are a user group of e-health services that can be challenging to define. They represent a large group of people in different life and health situations and their ability to use e-health services as well as earlier experiences with e-health services and the health situations may vary widely. At the same time, we tend to perceive older adults as a single group and to think that their entire group has the same kinds of user needs and patient experiences for e-health services all the time. This presentation will present a more nuanced picture of older adults as e-health service users. Firstly, older adults user needs are examined from the perspective of older employees because their needs during the transition from employment to retirement were not very well understood earlier in the literature. Secondly, older adults can be seen as a vulnerable e-health user group who are at risk for being excluded from society because of an insurmountable digital service environment. Additionally, um, Dr. Uh, Paula will talk to us about uh, critically ill older adults that have special needs for e-health services. Based on these perspectives, it is possible to identify what user needs older adults have for e-health services in different life situations and how those needs should be taken into account when designing e-health services in a human-centric way. Thank you, Paula, for coming, and I look forward to your presentation. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much of this opportunity to come here today to tell you a little bit more about my my topic um, uh, and also greetings from here Fernwood where I have lived here two and a half months now and uh, actually this this these are my one of my last days here at Canada because uh, um, me, my and my family's uh, plans are to travel back to Finland in a couple of days. But uh, I'm so happy to be here and uh, of this possibility to share uh, my thoughts together with all of you. Um, first, I would like to tell something about this, that, that presentation. So it will take something like 50 minutes or something like that. And after that, you will have a possibility to discuss about this topic together with me. Um, and um, then I will go to my own presentation. So like Elizabeth already said, I'm I'm doctoral researcher from Aalto University, Finland. Um, I'm a master of arts and design, which means that I look at this world from designer's perspective or designer's eyes. But I currently work at um, the at, um, uh, Department of Computer Science, so uh, information technologies and all kind of, kind of technology and healthcare, all the technology what we use for healthcare, e-health services, they are very near of my heart. I have started my doctoral stud studies uh, in 2007, so a <clears throat> couple years ago. Uh, I did them uh, mostly on part-time basis, and I had the same time my career at industry in IT and, and design companies. And, and then um, 
I continued my doctoral studies again in 2020 on full-time basis and um, And uh, there I changed my topics and my topic current doctoral um, top research topic is towards human-centered e-health services to all the adults, understanding needs and patient experiences. And some of the uh, um, publications what I will present you today, they, they belong to my doctoral studies and some of them not, but but uh, I have participated in those studies anyway. Uh, I work currently in three research projects, Digin eHealth in home dialysis and Nord eHealth. And if you are interested in those as a projects, um, you will see later in this presentation the references and the web page addresses to those projects web pages. Um, I'm in, in my studies, I'm very interested in all the adults and patient experience, and I'm very interested in all the adults' health and well-being and how we should design e-health so that, that um, it supports all the adults' health and well-being the, uh, in the best possible way. Um, I'm interested in user needs, so I collect user needs in my studies. Um, And I do it so that I look at all the adults' everyday lives. I try to learn what is what what is actually what kind it is actually, how it is all the adults' everyday lives. I'm interested in their experiences both on long-term basis and then also I'm interested in very short periods of use of e-health services and I'm very interested in moment of retiring and what uh, what kind of needs all the adults have uh, in a, that part of their life and um, then I'm uh, interested in all the adults healthy habits and their overall of their health and well-being but In, uh, comparing to that, I'm very interested in all the adults' illness and as well, and what kind of needs all the adults have in different health situations for e-health services. But, but overall, I'm interested in user needs for e-health services. Um, during my doctorate studies, um, I've done uh, more than 100 research activities uh, during the last years, and uh, my, di my data includes 80 hours of interviews and a survey study uh, with 497 respondents. I have done also usability tests for e-health service, and uh, my di data includes also 20 cultural probes packages. My participants in, in my old studies um, uh, Uh, they are from 56 to 93 years old, and I have currently 11 pair reviewed articles or publications, uh, and at least three almost ready, <laughs> written, but not published yet. Um, maybe you would be interested in, in um, the structure of doctoral studies in Finland. So... Normally, the uh, doctoral studies include at least 40, um, um, 40 uh, points or, or credits in total uh, st uh, studies, uh, different kind of uh, doctoral level studies, and then an approved doctoral thesis, uh, which normally includes at least in all the four to five, at least four to five. Um, Uh, good quality uh, published publications. And what I've been here at uh, Victoria, I've been here writing my doctoral thesis and um, and uh, I have all, all the data collected and almost all the articles already written, but not all of them are published yet. Um, and what I will tell you during this presentation is that uh, we will go through all the adults in three perspectives. 
We look at all the adult user needs from all the employees' perspective. Then we will look at all the adults in a vulnerable uh, position or situation and their user needs for e-health services. And then those older adults and their user needs who are very critically ill. And um, we go this uh, through uh, with three different publications where I have participated with. And um, in all of them publications, we, we check each publication's background and then the user needs what we have found uh, based on that study and the design, design recommendation based on those user needs what we have collected in that st study. Um, and the re design recommendations they have done uh, together with other, other um, researchers in that uh, current project. Uh, which is each publication about. And our target has been to think how uh, we should design e-health services so that they would be better uh, in the future and the patient experience would be better in the future. Um, after that, um, uh, I'll conclude the, the results together and then uh, I'll shortly introduce our university and our two research groups where we do um, patient experience and, and e-health service um, research from usability perspective. So this will be the content of my presentation. Um, and first, I will tell you some background of my thinking and so some background for those uh, three studies as well. So um, I think that we all have our own lives and, and our lives, lives continue every day more on. Uh, and we have changing health situations all the time. So. Uh, for example, this lady here on, on the left side of, of this slide, she has had very many different health situations before this moment. And now she is on, on the transition, or very soon she will be in the transition moment uh, from earlier health situation to the next health situation. Uh, and uh, those health situations might be uh, a different, uh, different kinds of periods, time periods, and they would bring different kind of, kind of needs, user needs for e-health services during that health situation. So our situation is all the time changing. And uh, it is not only all the adults situation. I believe that it is like everybody of us situation uh, situation in our lives. Um, then I want to tell you um, before I go to the uh, our publications that uh, all the adults actually is a very huge group of people. They are very uh, they, it, it includes very different kinds of people and uh, different, they are all different digital service users. So here at the left side of this slide, you can see this older adult uh, who is 40, uh, uh, 84 years old, and she has no any technology skills. But anyway, she has a tablet computer in use, and she also use uh, or very old basic Nokia cell phone, uh, with which she makes phone calls to her daughter when she needs some support or help with, with that tablet computer and of course for other reasons as well. Her hobbies are sports, but her sports is walking outside every day. And she also likes to follow TV shows from that tablet computer, what she owns, and she likes to knit in at the same time when she looks 
those TV shows. And then there on the right side of that slide, you can see an older adult who, whose age is 65 years old, old, and his technology skills are perfect. And he has actually all kind possible of devices in use, uh, including also wearable electronics for sports tracking. And yes, uh, also his hobbies are sports, but he likes um, jogging and he likes to go uh, playing golf almost every week. And in order to do that, uh, he likes open source programming as his free time and a volunteering work. And as you can see, they have different technological skills. They have different needs for uh, techn technical support and different needs for support, all kinds of support. They have different interests, interests in life. They have different health situations. They have different attitudes towards technology. And actually, they are from different technology generations. We should not um, forget that all the adults, it includes very many like sub-user groups, which are different together. And we very often talk about all the adults as a big or uh, same kind of user, uh, user group where everybody are the same kind of people. But uh, from, from my perspective, uh, how I think it, we should think that uh, there are very different kind of older adults under this older adults user group. Then uh, at this slide, um, I have tried, tried to open uh, what I actually do in my studies. So I do human-centered design. Uh, for e-health services. And um, yes, uh, we have uh, our older adults are uh, different life situations and different everyday lives. Everybody has different everyday lives. And um, as a part of those, of their everyday lives as a, um, in current health situation, what they currently have, they, they will get some peak experiences and I will later tell you what, what they are. Uh, but when, when um, our older adults use e-health services, they will get user experiences of that using those e-health services. And those user, experience, uh, user experiences are part of patient experience what, what the, uh, our older adults get during their, their uh, own patient parts uh, and during their uh, lifespan. Um, and what I do is that I collect um, older adults user needs and patient needs and uh, create together with my colleagues design recommendations for e-health services so that in the future, the e-health services and user experiences and patient experiences would be even better than nowadays. And to, in this presentation, I will um, use quite much that, uh, this kind of terminology. I, um, all the adult, it is very challenging to say that when actually old age or being older adults start, it is very, very individual thing, thing actually. And we, everybody think it somehow in our own ways. Uh, but in this study or in my studies, uh, the concept of older adults, it refers to the people from ages 55 to uh, more than 90 years old. And it is important actually to understand that older adults actually covers 40 years of the last period of human's life. It is very long time. It is almost half of some human's life. It is very long time. And we change during, when we are old, older, uh, becoming old, we change, our, our uh, body changed, our 
interest change, our um, our um, capability to use e-health services, they change as well during those 40 years. Then um, I talk about all the employees. They are all the adults who are uh, 56 to 70 years old. Uh, they are employees, so they are still in work life, but they are uh, very near of their own retirement moment. Then I'm talk about uh, I talk about uh, user experience, uh, which is the experience between the human and the di digital service, which is in use, and it covers all perspective between users' interaction with the company. Um, it includes, for example, e-head services of of some um, some um, uh, healthcare provider. Um, then I I will tell you about peak experiences or critical peak experiences. They are emotionally most intense positive or negative experiences. And these critical peak experiences, they are critical for good user experience. I hope that you still follow. <laughs> and e-health services, uh, they are solutions for health and well-being, and they integrate uh, all the data uh, regarding to health and well-being, and um, and um, it includes includes this aspect of interaction and communication between uh, uh, between st different stakeholders, for example, uh, clinicians and patients. Uh, that kind of e-health services could be, for example, patient portals or patient engagement platforms. And uh, somehow, when uh, uh, we are talking about e-health services, there is an attitude to make like the healthcare better in the future, locally and globally. Uh, then patient experience, um, it, repre it, it represents patients' all interactions during the care. Uh, ac but actually... Uh, we um, we have found that it still lacks a common definition, and and we should together with you and us uh, continue uh, by defi def uh, with its definition. Um, I somehow see that the original roots leads to the user experience. Um, and uh, these are those terminology things. And then I will also tell you about this human computer interaction, where I somehow believe that I belong <laughs> so, uh, in the academy world. Uh, so human computer interaction, it's a multidisciplinary field which focus on the design and computer technology and the interaction between humans, I mean, end users and computers. And it, its aim is to make systems more easier to use and very useful. Um, and here in, um, in this visualization, you can see the interaction aspect between uh, two kind of different end user for e-health solution. And next, we will go to the, the, the look at a little bit more of, of our studies, what we have done and published some papers of them. So uh, we, we will start with the older employees perspective. And uh, in the right side of this slide, you can see a layout example of this uh, patient portal, uh, which was a uh, which users are uh, actually participated in this digital service study. They, the, um, the participants were all the employees, uh, so they were uh, customers of one occupational healthcare service provider in Finland. Um, why we wanted to 
collect those peak experiences of this patient portal is that uh, all the employees, they are actually in very critical phase in their life if they want to secure healthy aging. And uh, in the same time, somehow uh, they are in the middle of huge life change uh, do, when they are during their transition from work life to retirement. But we actually uh, didn't know very much of their needs during that transition moment of their life. And um, we were, uh, we were um, collecting those peak experiences using uh, uh, that kind of a method called critical incident method. And uh, it focuses on the actual behavior and concrete experiences of the uh, respondents uh, of the patient portal and its use. So we were very interested in like the really real life of, of those older employees. And um, in the study, we also um, were interested in that uh, about the big experiences that um, are they critical for good user experience. The research questions in this study were that what are the critical experiences of older employees using a patient portal? And what needs do all the employees have for patient portals? And um, well, I already mentioned that, that we got uh, 497 um, respondents in, in our study. Uh, the response, response rate was 1.7%, uh, one, 1 which was a bit uh, low. Um, but on the other hand, uh, the participants were from 56 to 70 years old, and 64 of them reported that they, they are having a chronic condition diagnosed by a doctor, and more than 73% of them used medication daily. And this proportion is, is actually quite similar to this age group in Finland. And with this survey, we got 230 qualitative narratives of positive peak experiences of a patient portal and 97 qualitative narratives of negative peak experiences using a patient portal. So the amount it was, uh, of, of those peak experiences was quite nice. And um, when we analyzed those peak experiences, we found that all the employees, they really value fast and smoothly functioning patient portals. And, uh, and it was seen also with the negative peak experiences, which were uh, very often, often associated with poorly functioning features. Uh, and we also found that peak experiences are very, very, very significant to overall evaluation of the patient portal, and they are critical to consider in design. So all the employee, employees have, um, have uh, following needs for patient portals. So first, we should note that all the employees have overall willingness to use patient portals. Uh, they felt that uh, patient portals could provide more information and long-term support to them. Um, and they, all the employees, they really have a need more support for their well-being. And uh, they also have willingness to interact with healthcare professionals through dif different channels. It could be face-to-face um, -face, um, meetings, but it could be also be remote meetings or, or some other channels. For example, chat functionality was very popular. And we don't know why, <laughs> but, but anyway, it was one of our results. And how to take this account in design e-health services? So let's offer support for self-managing health. If it is important to all the employees, let's offer that support to them. Um, and let's offer with e-health services uh, 
possibility to make um, health decisions as a part of its users' daily routines uh, uh, during both work time and free time. This is one um, aspect which came out uh, in, in our peak experience narratives that all the employees, they, they found that uh, patient portals are uh, made possible to like to do those um, decisions for what, what to do for health or well-being as a part of their daily routines. Uh, it also made possible to uh, meet doctor or get help in, in some uh, challenge, uh, health challenge as a part of everyday life. Um, when we design health services, we should consider the whole customer journey, including, including different kind of ch service channels. And we should also concentrate to design very small transition between those different service channels. So transition from chat functionality to the um, for example, a uh, remote uh, appointment, it should be uh, it should be designed very smoothly, being very smoothly. And let's pay attention to communication possibilities with healthcare professionals. So, so those communication possibilities were valued by uh, all the employees, uh, but how will offer them via e-health services, it, uh, let's pay attention to that. And let's offer very useful and interesting content to the older employees. And navigation should be very smooth. Um, and let's make sure that the basic functions of, of that e-health service, they should be very easy and smooth to use. Smoothiness is a very important thing to the older employees. Let's also call, uh, call, collect constantly feedback of the uh, end users of the e-health services. And if we have some technical problems, let's correct them immediately. Then we will go to the next topic or next older adults uh, group, which uh, was the vulnerable uh, uh, all the adults or those who are potentially in vulnerable position. Um, I'll explain about this a little bit more. So um, basically, uh, we know that e-health can support human self-management and um, and uh, they are and and all the adults, for example, they are expected to take more responsibility of their own health and well-being nowadays than maybe comparing to a situation 20 years ago or 50 years ago, something like that. And during the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, eHealth's one of the main purpose or role was to enable the availability and continuity of the care. Uh, but in the same time, everyone does not have like equal opportunities to use and benefit of e-health services. And this creates a risk of digital inequality. So we want to, in this study, um, do qualitative, qualitative semi-structured interviews. And we want to understand the challenges of different potentially vulnerable e-health user groups during COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, in this study, we interviewed with my colleagues uh, in total of uh, 74 end users. They were, for example, migrants, mental health service users. They were them who, who uh, have a, a, a big need of health services. They, they use health services a lot, unemployed. And uh, we also had 16 older adults from age category 65 to 90 years old in our study. And I did those 16 older adults interviews uh, as a part of this uh, study. Uh, and now when we are talking about uh, older adults as a 
e-health service users? Uh, they are actually the largest individual group that faces challenges in using digital health services. And they have a lack of experience and skills with technology. They might have some financial difficulties. They might have some lack of motivation. They, they have probably some health issues. They might have some cognitive decline. They don't of, uh, always have uh, devices, uh, suitable devices for e-health use, or they they are um, they don't have internet access. Uh, they don't have enough support and guidance for use. Uh, so it, so it, this was the starting point in our study from all the adults' perspective. So our research question in this study was that what challenges were experienced by vulnerable groups in using digital health services during the COVID-19 pandemic? And please note that uh, in my presentation, the focus is on all the adults, all the adults and their challenges. Uh, but uh, we asked, asked the same interview questions from, the, from all of the other earlier mentioned uh, vulnerable or potentially vulnerable uh, user groups. So if you are interest, especially interested of some another end user group than all the adults, please read our publication. But I will go through uh, this from all the adults perspective. So all the adults have challenges and uh, Based on those interviews, they, they have a lack of basic computer skills. Uh, they have a lack of suitable devices to use e-health services. They have a lack of support and lack of training uh, so that they could take the whole, all, all possible advantage of e-health services use. And those who have some hearing, hearing disability, uh, they are not so motivated to use uh, such uh, health services which are offered remotely because they, they just can't hear very well. E-health services are not applicable for all healthcare needs from um, older adults' perspective. And older adults had the fear of using and making mistakes with e-health services. This is interest this was interesting uh, from many perspectives. Um, I Thing, uh, I, during the data analysis phase of this study, I thought that, that why they have so huge fear of making mistakes with e-health services. And I somehow understood that uh, for all the adults, health, is, health and well-being is so important thing that it somehow made the... Um, expectations or the fears a little bit higher than using normal uh, other uh, digital services um, than e-health services. There was something like that. Maybe, probably. Uh, other adults had distrust for the quality of remote health services. And uh, some of them uh, were preferring face-to-face -face services uh, of e-health services. And one reason for that was that they were living next to their service provider. But on the other hand, uh, we were uh, during the COVID-19 situ situation in such a situation where they couldn't go to face-to-face, -face, uh, go to have face-to-face -face services. So they were, um, so e-health services or remote services were the, the possible ones for them. Um, some of the older adults just were not interested of using computers and smartphones. So then they don't, they are not interested to use e-health services neither. Uh, they had tested the attitude towards digital health services. And actually, all the adults in this study had lack of awareness of available e-health services and they value. So this means that many older adults, at least in Finland, 
they don't know what kind of e-health services would be possible to use and why they should use them. So, um, yes, all the adults have many different needs for e-health services um, based on this study as well. Um, but uh, in this study, those needs were uh, probably more as a form of the challenges. Um, but anyway, investing in them, it could help us to improve equal access and benefits to e-health services in the future. Then um, what we should uh, continue is that we should continue our uh, offering traditional face-to-face -face health services. This was a need for, uh, from all the adults to have face-to-face -face health services uh, in the future as well. Uh, and uh, the same situation was with other vulnerable groups as well. Uh, so how we should take this account when designing e-health services? So first, let's continue providing services uh, with face-to-face -face, uh, next to digital channels. And then, uh, because uh, all the adults in this study didn't know of the uh, e-health services possibilities, uh, Let's invest, especially in communication and information sharing of the available e-health services. Then it is very important to ensure the data security. And uh, then uh, it is always important it uh, is to offer very easily accessible support to the um, e-health services users. And from user interface uh, perspective, uh, we should use very plain and very easily understandable language in the user interface. And we should concentrate in the clarity of the user interface and, the, and our target should be the easiness of use in design. Then we have the third um, older adults user group. And it was this critically ill older adults. So um, for, for the background of this study um, is that uh, this chronic, um, those older adults uh, in this study, uh, they, were, they had a chronic kidney disease. And chronic kidney disease, it affects something like 10% of population worldwide, which me actually means that more than 800 million of individuals have some kind of kidney disease. Uh, we should also understand that the prevalence of chronic kidney disease increases with age. And uh, you might be interested in that uh, in Canada, the prevalence is uh, a little bit more than 30% of those who, who are uh, older than uh, 65 years. Okay. Um, if you have chronic kidney disease, you have, uh, and, and, and this, uh, um, uh, chronic kidney disease in uh, on it, it end stage of of the disease. You have two kind of treatment options. You have dialysis option or kidney transplant option. And uh, if you take the dialysis, uh, the most common type of dialysis is in center hemodialysis, where uh, the patient um, uh, travel uh, to the centers to get that dialysis treatment, uh, something like three times, four times in a week, depends on the uh, health situation. However, home dialysis uh, is associated with higher quality of life of the patients and lower costs. And in home dialysis, the dialysis treatment uh, is done by patient at the patient's own home. Uh, in this study, um, we aim to identify the needs and experiences of, of home dialysis patient and their clinicians with the new e-health solution, uh, which was uh, under development during that 
that um, research study. We organized two remote workshops uh, for kidney disease patients and healthcare professionals. And um, uh, then um, actually uh, those workshops were just part of our whole study. So uh, all together in, in our user studies and, and um, uh, e-health solution development uh, was participated uh, 66 patient and healthcare professionals. And uh, this research was a part of a larger research project, which, which name is uh, e-health in home dialysis. And our research questions in those work, um, uh, uh, workshops were that what experiences home dialysis patients have of the e-health solution under development, and then what needs do clinicians have for the e-health solution under development, so experiences and needs. And here are the results. So uh, we have the new e-health solution, and there are two sites that or two kind of users. There are patient users and there are clinician users for that solution. And patients, for, uh, looking at the e-health solution uh, from patient perspective, uh, they uh, they. Uh, needed that uh, it should work as a part of the everyday life. And uh, they needed a very careful, very throughout orientation uh, when uh, beginning to use that new e-health solution. On the other hand, um, the new e-health solution um, offered the patient situation awareness, which means that uh, the patient had the possibility to follow their, their uh, health situation and the trends of their current, uh, of their health uh, based on the data. And they had, uh, with that new e-health solution, a possibility to react based on the data. Um, and the patient, it was, um, for them, it was important to get the sense of security uh, when their health data was transferred to the clinicians. And this can be looked at from two different ways. So the health data transfer uh, transferring need to uh, feel safe or secure, secure to the patient, but it also uh, bought an um, patient um, a feeling or sense of security because uh, they knew that the clinicians see the same health data than they see. And clinicians and patients had a possibility like, to build like shared knowledge of the current health situ uh, patient's uh, health situation. Uh, patient uh, valued easiness and comfortable uh, and uh, that uh, the e-health uh, solution is comfortable to use, reliable and safe. Uh, and uh, patient thought that uh, the new e-health solution, it offers like selection of choice possibilities, poss possibilities and some kind of adjustability to the, their different life situations. And when looking at the clinician's perspective, they said that the new e-health solution, it should be easy to use and it should smoothly fit as a part of the other system, what clinicians use as a part of their work, as a part of their work processes and as a part of their work tools. Uh, and what was uh, what was very important to the clinicians was that uh, e-health must not take time or attention from the face-to-face -face meeting with the patient. So it should not call at all the attention from the clinician. Uh, clinician wanted to concentrate in the patients. Um, clinicians thought that uh, this new e-health solution could help them defining the patient's current general condition, 
And this is something what I uh, uh, which I refer to uh, when I'm I, uh, I was telling about that patient pers perspective and getting the sense of security. Um, so so uh, clinicians thought that new e-health solution might help them to follow the patient patient's health status and together with the patient as a team. Um, and then um, uh, clinicians needed resources and guidance, uh, especially for the start of that new e-health solution use. But they thought that uh, it could be a modern, uh, a new way for care or giving care. And from design perspective, e-health services uh, should not bring extra work <laughs> to the patients from reporting perspective. So amount of reporting may not be increased to the patient. And uh, from um, content-wise, um, uh, the um, e-health service should focus on the most necessary health data for the treatment, but it should also uh, enable other patient-specific measurements. So each patient must uh, might have some own special interests of what they want to follow and what they want to see in the user interface. Um, then uh, this new e-health solution, it includes uh, many Parts, system parts. So uh, there was this um, laptop view or <laughs> user interface, but there were also some other parts, for example, some wearable electronics uh, in the patient's use at uh, that moment when we did that uh, study. And patients uh, wanted that the all system parts of that new solution must function reliably. And all system parts of that solution must be easy and pleasant to use. Um, and then the e-health solution should uh, adapt to the different patient part situations. Do you still remember when what I was uh, so, uh, telling you about the changing health situations? Those health situations, they are changing all the time. This is one thing what, uh, what, um, what users need because of that. Their situations change during their patient part. Hmm. And uh, clinicians felt the same way, so they knew. So um, we should also enable that adaptability to different situations to the clinicians as well. Uh, and uh, uh, the e-health solution should make uh, easier to clinicians to define the pa patient's general condition and to support the teamwork between the patient and the clinicians. So the patient. Uh, might have many clinicians in in his team <laughs> okay team so um e health uh, services could help uh, the all of them and the user inter interface of the e health solution must support different ways of weaving content so clinicians want to see the content different ways uh so uh it should be adaptable, uh, adaptable from that side. And it, it should be easy of use. And uh, we should offer to the uh, end users support, especially in, the, in that use, uh, use phase when, when, um, when uh, we start to use a new service. But during the use, using all the time, support is important. And then the benefits of artificial intelligence can be obtained. For example, uh, clinicians would value, for example, 
notifications. And then uh, I will conclude the findings from those three earlier mentioned studies. So let's take different life and health situations account when designing e-health. And we should remember that e-health should adapt to the, its user's life, not vice versa. And e-health should function smoothly as a part of patient everyday life and as a part of a clinician's work processes and also as a part of larger IT systems. Um, many older adults are actually very capable to use e-health services, but we need to remember that some of them are not. So therefore, we should always remember to concentrate the easiness of use and to, we should use plain language in the user interfaces and all the time offer support to the end users. Um, and then uh, next to the, the e-health services, we should continue offering health and well-being services in other channels as well. So uh, for example, face-to-face -face, uh, services are still very important the future. Uh, and when we design those different channels, we should do it holistically, taking all of those different channels account when designing one of, one of those challenges. Uh, we should not do the design work separately. So we should somehow think the uh, uh, healthcare services um, as a combination of different channels, service channels. Here um, I show you the references what I have used in this presentation. And at, at this slide, uh, you will see uh, again the, uh, the names of, of the publications what I present this, just presented. Um, uh, I would like to mention that uh, the last uh, publication, uh, the third one, uh, it, it, uh, it is in Finnish, it is written in Finnish, but it actually includes a summary in English. So you can um, find it from there if you are interested in that. Um, and then I would like to tell you a little bit about my home school, Aalto University. Um, uh, just a couple of words about that. So, uh, so Aalto University is just in Finland, like I probably mentioned, in Espoo, city of Espoo. Uh, we have 12,000 students at Aalto and 4,000 faculty and staff members. Uh, we have six schools in Aalto University, uh, which combines uh, science and art and technology and business together. Uh, and uh, we have more than 100 nationalities in our community. Uh, if you are interested in to get to know more about Aalto University, you, we have the web pages from aalto.fi. And then um, here are some photos from our campus at Espo. Um, and then uh, just shortly, um, I will present the research groups where I belong to. So we have two research groups at Department of Computer Science at Aalto University uh, in where we uh, do research on uh, e-health e -health and user experience and patient experience. Uh, and uh, one research, the first research group is usable and accessible e-health services for anyone. Our research topic 
uh, are, for example, usable and cognitive accessibility and effectiveness of e-health. And all the adults uh, user needs for e-health services and usability benchmarking. And uh, our user group, uh, sorry, research groups, our goal is to ensure that all user groups have equal access to e-health services in a way that meets their needs and enhances health and well-being. Then uh, here are these uh, research groups members. If you are interested in to hear more, uh, you can um, take a contact to Sari Kujala. Um, she is that lady there on the left side of, of that slide. Uh, you can take contact to her sending email, sari.kujala at aalto.fi. And then we have a second user group, uh, a user group, no, research group, uh, human-centered health informatics group. And our research topics are human-centered design of health, uh, e-health services, patient experience, usability of health and social care IT systems, and usability in IT procurement. And we have also web pages. You can find them uh, from aldo.fi. Uh, pages. Uh, we have their an own page, a G H I. And if you are interested, is interested in to hear more about our research group, um, you can take contact to, to Johanna Viitanen, Johanna dot at alto dot fi. And if you are interested in to connect with me. You can take connect to me via uh, LinkedIn, or then you can send me an email. My email address is paula.valkonen at aalto.fi. Thank you so much.